Chris C is here to discuss what's going on with Stuttering John. There's so much to discuss. As I mentioned, we're recording this on Saturday, so there might be new things that happen between now and Thursday when we put this out. But as of right now, the latest is that John was bragging about calling the Rochester Police Department on me. Jesus. And maybe we should start there. Let's let's get that up. I, I played this. Did I play this on the bonus show? I think maybe. Anyway, whatever. It was so long it's ago. Like, I forget that the Stuttering John, the Howard Stern, Jay Leno, that that holds a lot of weight to a lot of these congressmen <laughs> and women. They're like, yeah, I remember that guy. You know what I mean? It's yeah. You know, I just called. I have a you know. I have an issue. I called the Rochester Police Department, and and you know, and the detect and the detective on the phone happened to be named John, and he's like, uh, he's like, hey, Stuttering John, man, love you, brother. And it's just like like. It's just so weird, like you know. I guess, I guess that era, you know, it, it was such a rememberable. It, there was no <laughs> internet. Oh, yeah, God. True. true. So that, that's where I was radio and television, you know. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Rememberable, <laughs> also known as memorable. Yeah, Re- remember more, more, more ball. Uh, it was even more memorable. Re- remember more ball. Maybe he's confusing it with the Pokemon Rima Raid, <laughs> which is like a fish <laughs> eel type. Figure. Yeah, I'm sure that's what he was confusing there, Chrissy. Yeah, I think he nailed it for sure. Now, have you guys ever heard of a so like a let's let's say that John is a public figure? I'll use the term celebrity very loosely. Bragging about trying to have somebody arrested on his show—that's something that you would kind of do like on the sly a little bit, right? Yeah. He's very, again, nonchalantly bringing up that he called Rochester police. But, like, really the theme is he's still very relevant and popular and famous. He's tweeting about it. He tweeted yeah, that he had a that. great conversation with the RPD. And he'll tell us all about it at some point. I have yet to be arrested. I want to put, put that out there. Anything can happen between now and Thursday. But so far, I haven't been arrested Have you anything. spoken to them? Have you called no. them and been like, hey? No. There could be a not. knock at the door at any time. At any though. time. Yeah, for sure. They're, you know, they don't have anything going on. When this comes out, you might be in jail. That's true. <laughs> producer Chris will have to put this out for me. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll use my uh, my one phone call to call into John's show. Oh, that's right. He doesn't have the, the phone system up yet. Oh. I, I was talking about putting together a compilation of all the things John said would happen that haven't happened. <laughs> There's thousands of them at this yeah. point. He's always talking about, oh, I'm saving up money. I'm going to get a phone system in here. It'll be like a real show, real call-in show. You don't need a phone system. I'm going to get, get a big boy bike. <laughs> what I think is unfortunate, Carl, is that if he's resorting to calling the Rochester Police Department, yeah. it probably means that any um, moves that he's made with the great Michael Popak have not worked out. Correct. Yeah, That's what it means to me. So, yes, people are speculating that it's to have them serve me with whatever lawsuit he has. But that's not what the case is, because I got the cease and desist. I've responded to that. So now they probably haven't received You've my neither response ceased yet. nor desist. <laughs> well, I have. I don't do any of the things they accuse me of doing. I'll, I'll hand it to you after this. You have to read it. It's okay. pretty funny. So this, I think he really is trying to get me criminally arrested Damn. for bullying. I don't know. I don't know what he thinks is I'm doing that's against the law. Well, Did you, know, you take his lunch money? <laughs> no. He's been a substitute teacher, so he knows how, how dangerous bullying is. Right. So maybe that's Seen the angle. First hand. Maybe he thinks he can go to the principal's office. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He is that meme of the guy that puts the stick in his own bike and then falls <laughs> over. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, it was Carl. <laughs> I don't know if he thinks I'm going to get detention or something. Like the RPD are going to be like, you can't podcast for two weeks. Yeah, you're going to get a talking to. <laughs> yeah. We're going to call your parents. So anyway, John this past week tweeted that he had a conversation with the RPD trying to scare me or something. But that wasn't even the worst tweets he put out this week. So Artie Lang. Oh, shit. I forgot to talk to Jim about this. God damn it. I'm such an idiot. Artie Lang put out a tweet that he's finished some program, some drug rehab program, and he just right. wanted to let everybody know that things are going well for him. And everyone's like, good, that's great. Great to hear. So John tweets out, I'm happy to see my friend Artie, at Artie Quitter, so he tagged him in it, has completed his drug rehab. I know that Artie and I have had our problems, Twitter wars, on-air fights, etc., which I know now was because he was using. Oof. But at the end of the day, I will always love him and consider him a friend, hashtag Artie. 
which is a shitty thing to write. Just letting you know that it was all your fault. Yes, yeah, it was all your fault. <laughs> It reminds me of, like, Homer when uh, Marge has a gambling yeah. problem. You have a gambling, gambling problem. problem. Like, just fucking rubbing his yeah. face in it. And then Homer gets Marge a, a present of a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> that that old gag. Yeah. What's the point of hashtag Artie, though? Hashtag Artie is weird, too, right? Yeah. I that's... want to make sure everyone sees this. Ugh. It's so weird. Not Artie that Lang. Is, not that Artie isn't Claire. even the worst one, though. He then follows up with this. I've never, ever in my life had a fight with at Artie Quitter when he was sober. He was my closest friend on the show, which is why he was the only person I told about Leno. I never started a fight with Artie in my life. All fights were started by him when he was under the influence. Again, it's all his fault. It's insane. It's all patently false, too. Well, of course. I mean, we've, we've seen the pod. We've heard yeah. the podcast. We know what has happened between these two. So it's insane that he says that. Like, Artie, like, say, oh, get a little jab and just bust his balls. And John's response is, kill yourself! Like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Slow your roll there, buddy. But the best is somebody posted that tweet that I just read on the Dabblers subreddit. And Eugenius the Great, I'm reading his response again. He's, he's killing it. I hate when people blame their addictions for shit they say slash do. John took it to the next level, blamed other people's addictions for the shit he said slash did. Oh what a God. scumbag. That's how terrible addiction is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what an asshole. Addiction is the reason why I'm not getting enough super chats. Uh, what a total, what a total asshole. Wow. All right. Let's get into this episode that John put out on Thursday. You can see that Ron Filipowski joins, but he's not the first guest. And this is John starting off the show. Yeah, baby. Welcome to the world famous Stuttering John podcast with your favorite host, the world famous Stuttering John. Got to figure this green screen out right now, but I'm not going to do that because I know I have my guest who is a very popular guest. He's on MSNBC all the time. Please welcome the great Hugo Lowell to the show. How are you, buddy? All right, so this is the first Asian guest he's ever had, right? You think so? I don't. I don't pay that close <laughs> well, attention. Well, he had a prop mic, by the way. It's not plugged in. Well, do you hear how bad that sounds? Yeah. It sounds like shit. So the green screen is not centered. You can see heart, part of his room in the background, so that looks like shit. I mean, that's the the one rule about green screens: either cover it all or don't cover any. Yeah. What are you doing? It just looks childish, and he sounds like shit. It Ugh. just sounds like he's not even using the mic. Like maybe he's using his laptop. It's, it's not plugged in, or so he's got the wrong yeah. thing clicked. We didn't have time for a mic check. He had limited time. So people call him out on that, and he does go into the fact that it's because he cleared his house out or his room out. He got rid of all the cardboard boxes. Wow. And that's why it sounds like shit. The roaches were providing insulation that helped with the sound. Yeah. So we'll get into that in a second. But first, I just like that because John thinks he's a political pundit. He's talking to this guy who's actually at the House of Representatives, and he's reporting for MSNBC, and John can't keep up with any of the conversation that they're having. Oh, what votes are you talking about? Sorry. Um, they're voting on amendments to the NDAA, uh, which is kind of our only opportunity to grab some of the members today. So I have to go and grab them um, and then come back. But um, I'm just... Keep an eye on it for a moment. No, it's okay, you go. I appreciate that you're on. What does NDAA stand for? Uh, the National Defense uh, Authorization Act. It's the annual oh. um, defense spending bill. And so oh. it's like a big priority for Congress. Right. Okay, well, okay. Let me get right into it with you, you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what John does is he reads MSNBC, and then he repeats all the talking points that he saw on there and thinks that he's actually smart when it comes to politics. Sounds easy. We were just doing the yeah. Red Scare podcast earlier, yep. and these are people who are crazy, but at least they actually understand what they're talking about and have thoughts in their own ad that they come up with and yeah. opinions. John just regurgitates. He doesn't even know what the NDAA is. He should probably have known that before having this particular guest <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, you would think so. It's coming to you live from the NDAA. And he's just, like, embarrassed. You can tell. He's letting yeah. him know right away, okay, I'm looking at my phone. I could go at any minute. Like, I'm yeah. letting you know I have a hard out, and that hard out is literally any minute, any now. minute yeah. now. And guess what, Chrissy? That's exactly what happens. <laughs> he's like, all right, I got to go. Um, Did he think that really this was going to be a professional 
podcast? He's been on John's show before. Oh, God. I don't know if he'll come back again. Maybe he thinks this is a make a wish. <laughs> yeah. I got to do, I, I do some charity work. It's just something that, you know, I believe in. Yeah, Community so, service. He has hours. This is Hugo giving him the boot 10 minutes into the interview. Um, I really have to dash. But, um, uh, oh, I will come back again hours. soon, please, Hugo. Yeah, no, like, I'm, I'm glad we managed to get this done and um, finally, like, we get to sit down again because this is always really fun. Um, it's just that it's a very, very busy news cycle. I understand. As well. I understand. <laughs> but um, thank you for having me again. I really appreciate it. All right, Hugo. Take care. Yeah. All right, the great Hugo Lowe. Um, unfortunately, he had to go a little bit earlier than I anticipated, but oh. uh, <laughs> I didn't know that he, He's mad. he was... Um, you know, yeah. you know, he didn't have really that much time at all, which really kind of stinks because uh, <laughs> oh, I have so much more to talk to him about. But no, he doesn't know what to talk about. He's got to fill time before yeah. his next guest comes on because <laughs> he usually does an hour with each guest. He does a two-hour show. Wow. Hour with the first person, hour with the second person, unless them just talk at him the whole time. So he's not prepared to fill this kind of time. So he texts. Ron Filipowski is like, can you come on sooner? And the guy's like watching golf. He's like, I, yeah, I, all right, you know, whatever. So now John has to oh, fill man. some time. I would just, uh, the questions that I would ask uh, him, I'm just going to ask you. <laughs> right, yeah. So are you at um, DC right now? <laughs> no. <I'm not>. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is John's assessment of the C uh, January 6th trial that's going on, or whatever you want to call that. I mean, when you watch the Jan 6 committee, it, I mean, how much more evidence do you fucking need? This guy's as guilty as sin for so much. This is how all of these people are. They're still worried about Trump. They're this upset. Is, this is, there, is CNN <laughs> was on briefly the other day at Stand Up New York because I was doing a spot there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, right. These are the only places that play CNN still are like, you know, comedy clubs and restaurants who are absently just have it on. And all they were talking about was Trump. Still. It's insane. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It's almost two years now. Yeah. And they're still obsessed with Donald Trump. And, and he's guilty, and they want to find him guilty, and, like, and all this kind of shit. He's not thinking about you guys. <laughs> yeah, he's over it. Why aren't you, guys, you over it? You sound it? Like, a, a, like a jealous ex. They also think this is a trial. Yeah, I know. I know. It's it's very confusing. This is the same exact type of hearing that I think the Major League Baseball players did 15 right. years ago. Rafael Palmero shaking his finger. Nothing happens from this. Yeah, Sammy Sosa's not in prison. No. <laughs> you Maguire, know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, those 66 home runs. Show. Yeah, right? it is all for show, for sure. Um, so then people explain to John that he sounds like shit and he tries to figure out how microphones work. Okay. Let me explain something to everybody. And this is experience. This is, this is the world according to John. This is the stuttering John world. For all of those who don't know, we did pitch a reality show because I maintain... Uh, no, I'm using my real mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm using my Scarlet. Check, 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 check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely using it. So I don't know why. Crazy it's echo. just because I, you know, I moved out all the boxes in my room because it was just. I just said, you know, I'm sick of these cardboard. There's like there was like 10, 15 cardboard boxes. Why? So I said, you know, John, just put it in storage. So I just took everything out and put it in storage, which is why it's a little echoey. Because, you know, I liked the room. You know, oh it was all God. cluttered and stuff. And, you know, so I decided to just move everything now out. Now my green so screen can breathe. And I got to get some of those. Um, I got to buy insul those gray insulation. gray sponge-like sound muffling things so I could soak up some of the audio. I think he's uh, moving into a storage uh, unit. The mic's <laughs> further away. Is that better? Tell, I want it to be me. closer to all my right. boxes. Yeah. <laughs> also... He's not using the microphone correctly. This guy has been in broadcasting his entire life right. and doesn't know the microphone should be closer to your mouth than that. And then you, we wouldn't be hearing it ricochet off the walls coming back to it. Ugh. How does he not know how that works? Oh, because of the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> the stuttering sounds better from a distance. I also like the way he makes decisions. He goes, and I, I said, John, we got to get these boxes out of here. <laughs> it took him two years to figure out to stop using his, his shitty apartment as a storage facility, and then he's like declares like I had a conversation with myself, right? And we came to the determination that I don't need these boxes in here. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, the, if the roaches didn't give it away, <laughs> yeah. What was your first clue? 
all the boxes say like clothes to wear when I lose 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> these are all my size twos. One day these I These are will. my goal pants. Yeah, these are my Tonight Show blazers. <laughs> Shirts without holes. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to not put those in storage, John. Keep those around. You're going to need those Framed ones. pictures of me when I had a career. <laughs> all right, so now John has to fill... 30 minutes. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, he great. was not prepared to do this. Let's call the Rochester Police Department. Uh, I got a friend over there, Detective John. Is John there, please? Can he play? Remember me? Can John play for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now John has to figure out what to talk about. You'll never believe what he decides to talk about, the experience he just had at the bar the day oh. before. <laughs> Go figure. So yesterday I'm hanging out at the Scotland Yard. Yes, I don't only go to the Pickwick Pub. I also go to <laughs> J.J. Sullivan's, the Scotland Yard. Uh, you know, I go to... Um, Pickwick Pub! H.Q. Bistro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know. T.J. Fridays. You, Genepsis. <laughs> I know that's uh, got to be some joke. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you didn't know the joke. You, Genepsis, because I'm sure that's some kind of joke. Yeah, you don't get it? I don't get it. Huge Genepsis? What's that? Well... It's a huge penis. But th- what's, oh. what, what's funny about it is that the reason why it's written that way is because our review girl, Vic, read a username and pronounced it that way. <laughs> so it's an inside joke for who oh, this wow. podcast, which is always fun. <laughs> I know that's got to be some joke. Thank you. Um, but anyway. All right. So let's get into what happened at the bar. And I'm very excited to tell you, I don't want to spoil anything, but he won an argument. <laughs> oh wow I love when people tell you stories about and then he said this and then I said that and he's like whoa you're so smart I'm like I know you know it's like, wait wait what I have it all recorded <laughs> I have it all figured out so I'm there with two of my mates from England <laughs> mates <laughs> one a Trump loyalist the other just blames Biden for everything I love these hanging with his mates he's like cheerio John <laughs> hey Johnny boy have a sit. <laughs> They're fops. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Where's Kevin right now to play his mates for the Ooh. Ooh, I never. <laughs> so the reason why I tell these stories is because I, I think that this is what goes on maybe at your pub, you know, at your church, <laughs> at your Where else people hang out? What? Game. Pinochle. It doesn't matter. I, I, I think these are the kind of conversations that are going on in America as we speak. Name three places where people get together and have conversations. I can only name two. I can name three <laughs> bars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're hearing about the this. Pickwick, Pickwick and Scotland Yard. Counting with John. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're talking about this at Applebee's. One. I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right. So John is telling this. As a public service announcement, because this conversation is happening all over America, and he needs to not only educate his mates from England, <laughs> but he needs to educate all of us too, which is which is great. So I'm talking to these two friends from England, and somehow they couldn't wait to blame Biden for inflation. Now I hate to say this. No. Strike that. I love to say this. I do so much research (laughs) before I even enter the pub. And I just call them all pubs. (laughs) Because I know that the misinformation is going to get spewed towards me because I'm the loudest voice in the pub when it comes to the Democratic cause. Also, because I drink the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I know that everyone's going to yell at me because I'm the one making all the fucking noise. Everyone's in here. yelling at me, John, when are you going to pay your tab? <laughs> and I say, shh. It's not, it's, it's not Biden's fault I haven't paid my tab. I did my research. <laughs> I love that he says he does his research. He's so proud of himself. You're going to find out later what that entails. He did a Google search. Oh, wow. That's Causes legit. of inflation. That's legit. Oh. Was his Google search. And it, it, Biden wasn't the first result. So he's like, see? There you go. <laughs> You can even look at the second page. No, not that, not that page. No, not that result. No, this one over here. Don't go to DuckDuckGo either. So this is Fired Up Stuttering John. And this shows the level of political discourse that we're talking about with this asshat. I can't imagine having a conversation with this guy at a bar 
if you aren't agreeing with him. It's got to suck. Because I live it, love it, and I fight it <laughs> all the time against autocracy. I fight against Trumpism. I fight against right-wing <laughs> lunacy, racism, bigotry, transphobia, homophobia. <laughs> I like how he says homophobia. He's going to start rapping. White supremacy. <laughs> Telephobia. White nationalism. Fear of phones. I am the loudest Arachnophobia. <laughs> out of my Democratic friends. I am not an apologist. I am not a pacifist. And I will speak my mind, especially when I know the facts. And I say this with venom. <laughs> because I am so fucking sick and tired. Ooh. Of people coming at me. This is a one man show. With misinformation. <laughs> Telling me to shower. And misrepresentations. <laughs> I cannot fucking stomach it. She's so really am. fun to have a drink and with. Yeah, yeah. Blaming Biden. Look how fired up he on is. On inflation. This is probably what happens one. when he's teaching and someone throws a spitball. Biden. This is how he starts talking at <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you guys might think the spitballs are funny, but you are a racist and you are a misogynist, and he just throws out words that you know what they mean. This is sycophant. A, he reminds me of the band teacher in high school that would chuck erasers at our heads. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, I say you blame Biden. Inflation is 9.1 in England. Italy is, I think, 10. Hungary, I have all the numbers. I tweeted it all out. Hungary is like, you know, no, like 70% inflation. <laughs> but I'm saying they are misinformed. So England number one says, well, England always follows America. England number two says, yeah, the whole world, they, they all follow America. I go, what? You really think that the British economy is solely based on America? He already changed the thing that they said. These are his really good friends yeah, that he refers friends. to as England number one and England number two. But I like that they said, well, you know, honestly, the biggest economy in the entire world does have an effect on the rest of the world, especially trading partners and the value of currency. And he goes, you think that it's solely because of the U.S.? Like, that's not what they said, John. Like, even no. him recounting it. Yeah. What an asshole! <laughs> He's doing it wrong. You owe me a drink. <laughs> he then goes on to explain that supply and demand... It's something he learned about in Economics 101, and that's what the economy has to do with, with supply and demand. It's like, holy shit, John, you must be a treat. To be. <laughs> I can only imagine. And then he gets real smug right here. He talks about all of his knowledge on oil imports. Oh, I love smug, John. Now, <laughs> <laughs> his eyes get squintier yeah. the more right he knows there, about a yeah. subject. <laughs> that right there is He's just turning Asian. It's just the perfect, the perfect smug John look right there. Now, wait till you hear about how I won this argument. Now, <laughs> then, like, the other reason is the war in Ukraine. Russia, which I informed England number one, I said, well, you know that Russia is a large provider of oil. No, they're not. Russia. Russia doesn't give us oil. I kid you not, folks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and if you don't know it, I'll tell you, Russia is the third largest supplier of oil in, in the world. Is this a recording of him doing substitute teaching? It'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like He's just that, calling kids the, out for being assholes. I want the camera to pan to just a room full of students. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you think the answer is, Billy? Wrong again. <laughs> student number two. Student number one. <laughs> yeah, he calls him student one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's find out how John became so knowledgeable on all of these topics, like the economy and oil imports. But the fact that they don't know that and I have to tell them, is what is really frustrating to me. Like, 
I'm not claiming I'm a genius, although I am. Uh... But, you know, it doesn't take that much work to pick up a computer, hit Google, and look up reasons for inflation. Oh, Three no. words. Reasons for inflation. Showing off again. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you do that, yeah. you will find out what is really causing oh, God. the inflation and high gas prices in this country. Boom. I like that he starts by saying, I do my research. And it turned out to be a single Google search. I do yeah. my research. I saw an opinion piece. <laughs> yeah, right. Which is factual. <laughs> he goes, I gave all the information. I made one Google search, and now I know. Also, John doesn't bring this up, but increased money supply is certainly one of the reasons for inflation. He never brings that up. Like, when you actually flood the country with money, yeah. it's worthless. How much was printed? That's how inflation pandemic. works. Yep. And I'm not blaming Biden for that. This has been going on for a long time. But the fact that John never even brings that up, and he thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. And the best part is, is that he goes, my friends are blaming Biden, which is what you, you blame the president. I'm not saying the president has any fucking control over these things, but that's what people do. And what's funny is that John doesn't pick up on the fact that he blames Trump for, for everything. everything. And that's fine. You can't blame Biden for anything, <laughs> but you can blame Trump for everything. And he says it in the next fucking breath. Oh, God. They don't realize that Donald Trump, <laughs> his response to COVID was so lame <laughs> that more people we got didn't it. have a response in the first six months of it because... This has been backed up and corroborated <laughs> because it was happening mostly to people in blue states. What? What? And Jared Kushner decided maybe not give them PPE so early. Easy, easy, dad. Maybe we don't give them any PPE. We're, they're only killing people in blue states. What? Based on what? Oh wow. God. Is that crazy? Damn. That went from zero to 100 quick, didn't that's a, it? That's a conspiracy right there. That is a, a crazy conspiracy. They're like, well, we can kill some Americans. That's fine. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Holy shit. S super villain John. They, they went after <laughs> people with disabilities like stutters. How do you avoid making this a political show when you hear him lie like this? I, it's insane. I know. And, and trust me, we could get into I'm, all of these things. Gonna, it's like, yeah, yeah, like, what's the point? He's just an idiot. But I did want to figure out. How did he learn about this information? <laughs> Who told him this information? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Al Sparks will tell you. I think, he's told, I think he's the one who, either him or Noel Kessler were the ones to inform me on that. Al Sparks is my number one news source. Don't forget, Donald Trump was out there telling people to put fucking flashlights up their ass. <laughs> <laughs> that got a genuine laugh out of me. <laughs> when he, said, he wasn't trying to be funny, but I was like, okay, that's a pretty good joke. <laughs> I just light up your ass to cure your keys are always the last place you look. <laughs> I love that he goes, so Trump was actively killing Americans. You know how I know that. The two people I have on my show who hate Trump and have nothing good to say about him told me so. Oh, well, then there you go. If Noel Kassler thinks that, then it must be true, obviously. How far gone is this guy? He's in a whole different fucking so dimension. So confident. Than me. Yeah, I know. It's almost like anybody can go on his podcast, tell him something, yep. and he just believes it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, literally. Like anything. We played it just a couple weeks ago. Somebody posted on there, uh, Carl just tweeted out your uh, home address. Oh, right. And he's like, oh! There he goes again, doxing me. I'm like, I've never tweeted out anyone's home address, John. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He just believes anything anyone tells him. And, and Trump likes to kill Democrats, as we all know. <laughs> I can't believe my address did not get more likes. Hey, should we give some masks to people in New York City? Fuck those people. <laughs> They're blue. Yeah. <laughs> Rerouted to Florida. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. Uh, put a flashlight up his ass. It's funny because Trump did say some fucking wacky shit, yeah. but then the way that the telephone gang is, game has worked over the last couple of years, oh, it's yeah. now turned into like you said, shove a flashlight up your ass. Like if he would have said that, I would have been fucking laughing my ass off. <laughs> I think you would have gotten reelected if he would have said that. <laughs> Pretty good. And it, not to get political, Frank, to your point. Yeah. The person who actually did actively kill people was Governor Cuomo. Yep. And Newsom. 
And then don't. Fr- uh, okay. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, uh-huh. But li- literally, they came out and confessed that they made the wrong decision and lied yes. about it mm-hmm. because they didn't want to fuel Trump. Yep. Like, well, yeah, yeah, of course we made the wrong decision by, by making all of those people go back to the nursing homes. But, you know, we had to do that. We had to lie about it because, geez, Trump could have used that as like a campaign slogan or something. Like, um, that's evil. You people are evil. You know that, right? And then he's turned it into Trump with PPE for some reason. It's fun stuff. Oh, John. All right, let's get into some investment advice. Oh, and also, I want to remind everyone, I made this declaration on the show last week. We need to keep John's career alive. Everyone vote for Trump in 2024. Okay. It's the only thing that's going to get CNN and MSNBC ratings again, or guys like Stuttering John and Hale Sparks, because it's getting old now. Like, There's no boogeyman They're running anymore. out of gas. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's it's like Spider Man, and there's no super villains. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, well, what are you doing? Like, I, I don't know. Just this guy's... Shooting webs at the wall. Yeah, <laughs> literally the the plot to Mystery Men. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There's, there's nothing to solve yeah. anymore. Okay, well, kind of sucks. Let's get some investment advice from uh, our friend Stat Joe, who's rolling in dough. So why not? Look, I got plenty of stocks. I'm getting <laughs> crushed. Some of them are mismatched. I lost like half <laughs> of my shack. fucking assets in stock. I'm getting killed. Thankfully, I'm not a short-term investor. <laughs> you should be. You know, when you buy Disney and Ford and GM and American Airlines and the various other stocks that I hold, you don't worry because it's going to come back. There'll always be Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars. There'll always be Ford Fusions and all the Ford Damn, Broncos. That's the car and all- I drive. Is it? Yeah. Ford discontinues lines all the time. There will always be Ford Fusions, will there? I don't know. <laughs> Do you have stock Ford in Star be- Wars? <laughs> yeah, yeah, stock in Star Wars. I invest in Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Instead of mad money, it's stuttering money. <laughs> It'll come back. GM as well. American It'll Airlines come will come back. back. Just like Heather. And, and, and the other blue <laughs> chips that I have. <laughs> oh, he's got it all figured out. He's got all the chips. All right. <laughs> So John's lost half of his assets, but he's confident that he'll live long enough to see that come back. Way I'm back. not, but I hope it's true. So let's find out the only thing that John holds Biden accountable for. Because John has said, I'm not an apologist. I just think he's doing a great job. <laughs> and he's doing everything right, except for one thing. The only thing that I blame Joe Biden for, the only thing, uh-huh. is Merrick Garland. Okay. Now, I know you go lower. You'll, you go what? lower. Just told us to be patient. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Just you know, things will get better. <laughs> Garland's going to do his job. I don't buy it. <laughs> so the only thing he's concerned about <laughs> is Merrick Garland. Not Afghanistan? I, I mean, you, nothing else that Biden do wrong? I'm, I'm a little surprised he's been in office for a long time. I feel like he would have made a few mistakes here and there. Not according to John. All right, so then John brings his guest on finally because this is painful. This whole, this whole segment that he was not prepared for is super painful. So finally, he brings on Ron Filipowski, and Ron wants to ask John a question. I just found this back and forth kind of amusing. Hi, John. John, can I? Am I allowed to ask you a, a <laughs> question about uh, your experience on Howard Stern? Allowed. Yes, just just don't talk about the conversation we had earlier. No, 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 no. Oh. Yes, it's just something I always wanted to ask you for a long, long time. Sure. So you, can I? I can do that. Okay. Because you know, I, you want, I'm an open book. All right. Just talk about. Don't talk about the pictures I sent you of my penis. <laughs> yeah. He goes talk about anything you want. I'm an open book. Right after saying, <laughs> let's not talk about the thing we were just talking about, though. Oh right. God, yeah. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> What's that all about? I'll talk about anything. So there's this podcaster, Rochester. Nope. Who are these? Nope. <laughs> Carl, nope. Nope. Uh, all right. So then this interview is bonkers because Ron decides to talk to him about Howard Stern and John goes through 
all of the things we've heard a thousand <laughs> <course>. times. <laughs> oh, no. Getting the job on the Tonight Show and how he tried to talk to Howard about it. Howard didn't want to talk to him. And then Hardy said to do this and Robin said to do that. It's like, Jesus Christ, why are you rehashing this? You would think he'd be bored of these stories. I am. Yes. How is he not He's bored of telling to these stories? He's impress just Ron. This could I have been so. a phone conversation. This, this should have been a phone conversation. This didn't conversation. have to be a podcast. This should not be a show. Everyone's heard these things a million times. So after talking about how great he was on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and he talks about how, like, well, that's how they discovered me on The Tonight Show. They saw me on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and so they had me on the show, on The Tonight Show. She saw me and fell in love with me. Then they booked me as a guest. Then I came to the show, was a guest, and I killed it. It's on my website, SutteringJohnMelendez.com. You should watch my first appearance on The Tonight Show. Killed it. So you went on as a guest. Yes, and Jay... I didn't know that. Okay. Jay was laughing his ass off. Oh. The whole crowd he is laughing. Uncle Rico I was from honest, Napoleon I'm, Dynamite. I'm <laughs> yeah. So Julius pointed this out. He calls. He, he just shows about Southern Jenny. He calls it the Uncle Rico show. Yes. <laughs> because, yeah, every single story is just like, I was the best. Everyone loved me. It was unbelievable how great I was. The, the idea that he would tell a guest on his show, go to my website and watch my first appearance on The Tonight Show. Like, no, it's fine. No, I'll wait for you. Go ahead. <laughs> Bring, yeah. bring it up. Go do it right now. I'll bring it up. Uh, I happen to have it right It's still <laughs> loading, right? <laughs> Refresh it. Okay. Jay was laughing his ass off. The whole crowd <laughs> oh. laughing. I was honest. I'm, I'm a New Yorker. And 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 it was just jokes that I had written on the way there. And um, <laughs> Jesus, John. It's so embarrassing. I know. Let's look at his website real quick. <laughs> because it's a little dated. He couldn't just get stutteringjohn.com? Yeah. <laughs> no, he had to get stutteringjohnmelendez or johnmelendez.com right. or something. That would be easy. No, it has to be stuttering in it. Of course, all caps. I don't do politics in my stand-up, but what? when it comes to oh my, my podcast, I am dedicated to taking down the dotard known as Donald Trump. Please press the donate button to keep the podcast going to guarantee his fat ass is voted out in November. <laughs> wow, I didn't know he was still in office. Apparently he is, which is interesting because... The copyright on this website is next year. Oh, oh Dante. <laughs> Dante is still his uh, contact. Oh, yeah. He might want to update that, too, because he's been fired Have from Golden Artist Entertainment. Have you tried talking to Dante yet? I should. I should reach out to him. We should He'd be interesting. Him. Do you have his number? It's right there. Um, well, yeah. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> we all have his number. Good point. Yeah, I should give him a call. Mr. Kister. This website was made in the future (laughs) when Donald Trump is still in office and needs to be taken out. It's like when you leave your Christmas tree up and it's May. It's like, is it too early or is it too late? (laughs) Yeah, right. We do this. Christmas in July. (laughs) So this is his website. It starts with this ridiculous picture. Oh, my God. How many pounds ago is that? (laughs) Also, can you find one photo of you not holding a beer on stage? Can you try to be professional for a half a fucking second on the homepage of your own website? Yeah, but uh, that's a Bud Light. That's how people know that that's I'm it. cool. Yeah. What's he got on, on upcoming appearances? Anything Anything new? All right, let's look at that. I want to say, I don't it know. It says upcoming appearances, not even appearances with an S. Upcoming <laughs> appearance. <laughs> Literally <laughs> one. It's yeah. in the singular. My upcoming appearance. He knows he's only going to have one booking at I'll a time. I'll be in Canoga Park. Webmaster called yeah. his bluff. I'll, I'll be in court one. this Monday. Yeah, I'll, I'll be at the Home Depot. <laughs> I only have one show at a time. Does anyone else, anyone else, I don't care what profession you're in, <laughs> have lawsuits? As the main navigation <laughs> on your oh. website. Oh, <laughs> Before oh. swag. Before yeah. swag. Yeah. Damn. Swag, which I pointed out before, stuff we all get is supposed to be free. I, yeah. Yeah. I, had, right. I had no idea what swag stuff Yeah, stuff we all got. <laughs> but he, he thinks that it's merchandise because he's a fucking moron. Ugh. I love that he has lost it. Let's look at that real quick. This is. The whole, yeah, the, the serious XM lawsuit, which is in the process Why? of getting thrown out right now. Like, you might want to take that Why off your website. Why would you have this on your website? All right, you guys ready? Let's see what's out there. Does it make him seem appearance. edgy? Oh. Oh, it's all. <laughs> it's all old. No, oh, it's all, no. It's way old. The it's pandemic. A, uh, it's almost a year old. Pandemic. Ah, and he's looking over the dates like, oh, I know. It's literally <laughs> all of our faces when we look at his gigs. Right. <laughs> And you don't dabble. How dare you, sir? This this website was written in the future. See, what sucks about it is he just explicitly told Ron to go to his website. Yes. So it's active, in his opinion. 
Oh Why yeah, Th- you, that's. Uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you for pointing that out because it's one thing to say like his website's out of date and you should probably right, update right, it, right. but he's actively telling people go to his website to go to his website and check it out, and it's embarrassing. So let's go to his um the thing he's talking about. Is yeah, here it is on the homepage. Right his Tonight Show appearance. His heyday. His TNT show. Oh no, his it doesn't. First it doesn't work. TNT oh, show. Hey. Hey. TNT two night show does he think two night is two words <laughs> <laughs> what the oh, fuck is that no. two what else could it be <laughs> wait two T- TNT the, tonight the, the, TNT was the a network night yeah it's not TNT I'm confused I don't, I don't know what that is maybe it's like it was dynamite <laughs> I don't know fully on the Howard Stern show I do like that when I pause it I see one of my videos show. <laughs> It's also just on, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> Please welcome wow, it's hard to make Leno laugh. John Melendez. <laughs> I made Leno laugh. Yeah, he laughed at the title of the show here. <laughs> it's not... He laughed at your credits. <laughs> yeah, it's not difficult. <laughs> yeah. He's also a <laughs> comic. <laughs> <laughs> That guy. I've never seen that guy. Holy shit. What's Who is that? Hat? I don't know. He looks like Snoopy's brother. <laughs> oh, that's the, a deep bull. The, 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 the spike. The dry boy that All was right. in the desert. There you go. All right, it looks so thin. What? All right, thank you. There you are. I can't believe I'm here today. Well, it's nice to have you here. Well, you're a celebrity now. Was Jared from Subway busy tonight? Or what happened? <laughs> is that one of the ones that he wrote in the car? Well. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, yeah. That one of those he you wrote in the know, car on the way over. He bought that hat that week. You know, he's like, oh, that I day. need something edgy. Yeah. Yeah. I need something different to wear. On yeah. the show. <laughs> Boy, you catch on fast. Can, Can I take this off? Take my... that stupid hat off. Yeah. My wife said I look good with the hat, but I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Take it off. You look fucking stupid. My wife says I look good in this hat, and where are my checks? <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't have a wife. <laughs> you're, you're late with the child support. But she says a lot of things. It's ridiculous. And you know, it makes your hair look good, too. But yeah, you know. You oh, no. Now tell me about it. You're just back from Australia. From, yeah. I'm what a celebrity. What was the fucking point of the prop? Uh, he comes out and the hat takes off immediately, and now his hair looks like shit. What was the point of that? It's a talking point. <laughs> It's a conversation starter. Something You're on a talk show. You don't need a conversation <laughs> starter. In case we have nothing to talk Jay about. Jay will take care of that. Talk about my hat. <laughs> He's got notes. She did a pre-interview. You're fine. You should have worn a fucking top hat. I don't know. The only thing worse would have been had a smaller hat underneath it. <laughs> I don't think that would have been worse. No, that would have been hilarious. Now, John, are you better or worse than the average of your four grandparents? <laughs> Get me out of here. Who are you?